I'm Anna Maria Galante. Welcome to the Kings County Review. This is your monthly video summary of Kings County Municipal Affairs. Here are the top stories for September 2011. Kings County Council setting a new course for sustainability. Councillors voted unanimously to adopt the terms of reference for the Kings 2050 visioning process at last month's council meeting. Councillors also unanimously supported a call for a biosolids presentation at the upcoming November meeting of all Nova Scotia municipalities. Council is heeding calls from its emergency preparedness officials to discuss climate change events, especially flooding. At risk are low-lying areas such as the Cornwallis River Basin. The Ecology Action Center recently made a presentation on hydraulic fracking to the Kings County Committee of the Whole. People are really actually scared about this issue. That's the thing that I find um, most when people call me. They're scared. In some areas of the United States, fracking has been associated with drinking water contamination. In Nova Scotia, three companies currently have the right to use fracking as a means to explore for oil and gas. Triangle Petroleum Corporation is leasing property in the Windsor area. The issue for Kings County would be any shared watershed in this area. This company will apply to drill and frack up to seven more wells before 2014. Triangle drilled and fracked two wells in 2008. Petroworth was recently granted an extension of their lease near Lake Ainsley. The government has initiated a call for exploration proposals in three property blocks along the north shore of the province. We'll have a full report on the questions raised by public and councillors in our next issue. Attend a council meeting. Get involved. Your voice does matter. Visit the Kings County Review blog for your municipal council schedule. Kings County Council is boldly going to a place where few councils in Nova Scotia or even Canada have gone before. Not only are they putting longer range planning in place, they're making sustainability the destination. The review was there the night council unanimously passed the terms of reference for the King's 2050 visioning process. We asked county planner Ben Civic, what's your definition of sustainability? We can't continue to burn oil and cut down trees as if we've drawn limited resources and so there's just a general acceptance that yes we need to change our ways and I think people are recognizing that and, and, and supporting a planning initiative that kind of takes that as a founding principle and okay let's, let's not talk about whether we want to do that anymore, let's talk about how. And that's uh, and so I think that's uh, you know, just a general acceptance of that idea and out in the community. King's 2050 will streamline and merge the county's planning strategy with the smaller towns and villages within its boundaries. As the third largest municipality in the province, involving the smaller communities is no small undertaking, but the warden says there is an unprecedented will to action. I think this is the first time that a planning document um, in, in the entirety has ever been reviewed for the seven villages and the three towns and the county of Kings. So in other words, we're going to get to know all about the infrastructure, all in a, about the needs in terms of well fields or uh, wetlands, bridges, waterways, any other issue that might come to play into that document. The existing land use bylaw and municipal planning strategy came into effect in the late 70s and a number of amendments and changes have been made since. These are the rules that determine, for example, where you can build a shopping mall, a subdivision, or where you can operate a farm. The planners themselves say that mending the current strategy piece by piece over the years has resulted in layers of red tape. Once the towns approve the terms of reference, a memorandum of understanding will be signed by Warden Brothers, the three town mayors, and the province. Staff estimate the planning process itself can be completed in a maximum of three years with public input sought directly in the first year. If you'd like to read more about this process, be sure to read the advertiser story by Kirk Sterrett, which can be found online. In his most recent presentation to council, Regional Emergency Management Coordinator Gary Smith presented a slideshow of the county's own Inconvenient Truth increased flooding during warmer winters. 
Later the same evening, Council approved a $48,000 contract for a new berm design to handle high river events. Flood waters breached the failed subdivision dike near Greenwood just within the last year. The application of treated sewage for use on farmland as fertilizer has been vigorously debated in agricultural locales around the province in recent years. In that time, local veterinarian Marilyn Cameron has personally funded presentations to councils around the province. Cameron is concerned that thousands of pollutants have been detected in urban sewage sludges, yet testing in Nova Scotia is limited to only 11 heavy metals, 2 bacteria, dioxins, furans, and PCBs. Last month, Council endorsed her bid to bring her presentation to the Union of Nova Scotia Municipalities when it meets in Halifax, November 1st to 4th. And that's your Kings County Review for the month of September 2011. We're excited about the show, and we really need your comments. Share this program with your friends, pass it around, and check out Kings County TV on YouTube. The transcript for this show is available online at kingscountyreview.blogspot.com. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave comments on our blog. Thanks for watching. I'm Anna